Hey everyone, this video is about terminal velocity. Uh, really quickly here to explain what terminal velocity is. It's when an object falls through the air and it, because it goes faster and faster, it encounters more air resistance till eventually the rate of acceleration equals zero because the net force on the object equals zero and then it falls at the same velocity. Now this all has to happen through air. So what I'm gonna do in this, this example is let's say that there are two, uh, two guys that are gonna go skydiving. Um, and let's say that we have uh, one guy's a, a much bigger guy than we'll call the little guy. Um, and there's a lot going on here, but I'm gonna try my best to explain. There's one more thing I wanna to add to this is we're gonna assume that both the little guy and the big guy's body orientation is pretty much the same uh, throughout their skydiving, because um, that does have an effect. But let, let's take a look at what's hap what happens here when they jump out of the airplane. So when they both jump out of the airplane, right off the bat, they both would start to increase their velocity as they fall. So let's just take a look at the little guy. So let's say the little guy jumps out and we look at his velocity and it goes from 10, 20, 30, 40, 48, 52, 55, 55, 55, 55. Now, why did these velocities become the same? He's reached what's called terminal velocity. So here's, here's what's happening. Both the little guy and the big guy do have different weights. We're gonna talk about it in, the, in a second here, but looking at the little guy's weight, as he jumps out of the airplane, the moment that he jumps out of that airplane, his weight is what causes him to accelerate towards the ground. But as he accelerates and falls through the air, more and more air resistance goes against him as he's falling. So as he falls faster and faster, more and more air resistance will go against him until eventually the amount of air resistance that is going against him equals the weight. It's like putting your hand out of a moving car. Now the bigger guy, same thing would happen to the bigger guy, but the bigger guy's got a little bit more weight. Because there's a little bit more weight, you can see that those velocities, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 57, 62, 65, 65, 65, he reaches a much greater terminal velocity than the little guy. Just because he has to encounter just a little bit more, a little bit more air resistance to equal his weight. Now in both cases, they would both start when they jump out of the airplane at 10 meters per second squared. But you can see that they both eventually decrease their rate of acceleration to zero meters per second. And that's when they reach what's called terminal velocity. The bigger guy just reaches it a little bit later because he has to encounter a little bit more air resistance than the little guy. So to summarize, to summarize, and it doesn't matter, this is talking about uh, a lighter object, a heavier object. This could be a bowling ball and a baseball dropped from a very tall building. That in both cases, the amount of air resistance would have to equal the weight. And when that air resistance equals the weight, they reach terminal velocity. So to summarize, in both cases, as air resistance increases, the net force decreases and the rate of acceleration would also decrease. Velocity would increase until it reached terminal velocity. And when they reach terminal velocity, that's when the net force eventually equals zero. So that's, in this case, net force equals zero. The rate of acceleration would be zero and the velocity would stay the same. And then hopefully, once they've reached this term of velocity, they would decide to pull their parachutes. And once their parachutes open up, their term of velocity would get much less until they hit the ground. I hope that helps you out and helps you understand a little bit more about terminal velocity.